how do the signs fit in with astrotheology? So I can go through the 12 signs with you and explain that if you'd like. Yeah, actually, could you please? Sure. All right. So I start with Aquarius, even though the new year starts in uh, Aries. I start with Aquarius. So Aquarius is represented by the man with the water pitcher. Then Pisces is the sign of the two fish in the water. Then Aries is the ram. And in Aries, you have March 21st, which is the spring equinox. It's a 12-hour day, 12-hour night. It's also the Passover, or the passing over of the sun over the equator and back on its way up to the height in the summer solstice. In Christianity, the passing over is changed and called the resurrection of God's son. So you have the passing over and the resurrection. It's basically two things, two separate meanings, but it has the same meaning. Um, it's also why the Jews mirrored the lamb's blood on the door. Sean Dustin spent time in federal and state prison for drug trafficking and fraud. Upon release in 2006, he had nothing but the clothes on his back, a bag of mail, and legal paperwork. In 2010, he kicked a longtime methamphetamine habit and started the long climb back up the ladder of life. This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast. If you want transparency and authenticity, you're in the right place. This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast, and this is Sean Dustin. What's up? This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast, and I am your host, Sean Dustin. Ah, I got a little screwed up here with my uh, my instruments. I didn't get a chance to share this, so uh, when I bring in my guest, I'll share this to the Facebook uh, groups that I need to. But yeah, uh, thanks for joining me. Um, this is your first time listening. Welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. It's good to have you with us this evening. Do me a favor. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button, wherever it is, over in the corner, and uh, thumbs the video up. If you're on Facebook, share, like. Uh, if you're on the podcast platforms listening, do me a favor and subscribe. That's very important for you to subscribe because that helps me become more visible on the podcast platforms. Uh, I don't know why it is, but that's just the way it is. So, and also too, if you're enjoying the uh, streaming app that I'm using, StreamYard, uh, do me a favor, uh, go and check out the link in the description. That's my affiliate link. And you'll get a $10 discount when you send $25 and I will get a, uh, a, I'll get a kick too back from them. That'll help support the show. Also, um, all the ways to connect to the show, social media, uh, merchandise, anything you could possibly want. If you want to uh, support the show monetarily, there's a Patreon <clears throat> link there. There's also a, uh, I believe uh cash app and PayPal links there too. If you want to uh, shoot the show a tip. Uh, but one of the things that I've done is I've kind of put my Patreon together. So if you like what I'm doing and creating and have been wondering how you can get involved and help support my vision, head over to my Patreon page and check out the perks and benefits you receive for becoming a monthly subscriber. You can also learn more about the nonprofit organization that my team and I are building to build for transitional age youth, ages 18 to 24, in my county that are reentering the community from incarceration. As a subscriber, you would be helping to support and build, uh, actually help build and support my ability to work on this project full time while being able to still bring you the engaging content that you enjoy listening to or watching, whichever way that you happen to be consuming my content. Uh, so my guest this evening is M Micah Dank, and he is an author of three books. It's a three-book series, uh, I believe, called Down the Rabbit Hole. And he's going to be here tonight. I, I might have got that wrong. But he's going to be here to talk about uh, astrotheology and some other stuff having to do with that. So I'm going to go ahead and bring him in here. What's up, brother? How you doing? Good, good, man. 
Did I get that right? It's is it down the rabbit hole or into the rabbit it's hole? It's into the ra- it's into the rabbit hole and three books are out. It's a six book series. Ah, oh, six book. All right, cool. And they're and they're like stories, right? They're nonfiction stories that kind of paint the picture of, of what you present. They're fiction stories. Fiction? They're much they're, they're much like <clears throat> they're much like Dan Brown's uh thrillers. Okay. They're, much, okay. they're they're thrillers basically, and I have all this uh, secret information in them. Okay, so is Dan Brown? Is he the author that was uh, that did the Angels and Demons and and Da Vinci Code? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Tom Hanks movie. Awesome. Awesome. So astro theology. I took a look at what you were doing uh, on some, or I, actually, I listened to a podcast earlier uh, that you were on, and it's. It's pretty interesting. It's how, so explain it. Yeah, <clears throat> astrotheology is basically the mythology around the zodiac and the constellations. The same way the Greeks and the Romans had their mythology with Jupiter, um, with Jupiter, Zeus, uh, Saturn, what have you. Uh, it's the same type deal. <clears throat> basically, the idea behind it is that Jesus is the son of God, but not the S O N. He's the S-U-N of God, and it's basically sun worship, and it's just hidden codes that lead you to figure that out. So that's kind of what I'm what I'm getting from you is that religion or the Bible um, is based on the zodiac, uh, the constellation, the stars, and because there was. Uh, Am I am I kind of correct or yeah? Off but you're 100 percent correct. That's exactly what it is. Okay, because for me, I'm not a big uh, religion guy. Mm-hmm. I I think it was you know in my own personal opinion. This is me talking. I think that religion was used um, back in the day to control people when nobody else was looking. And if oh, you it still could, is. Yeah, to a certain extent, but I think back then, I mean, we just, you kind of believed everything that you, you, you heard. And we have the same kind of phenomenon going on right now if you're watching TV or the mainstream media, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, if it's coming, if it's coming from a authority or a source that people are used to, they 100% believe it. And if it doesn't come from there, then everything else is like, oh my God, nope, they refuse. Right. So this is pretty similar to that then, yeah? Yeah, 100%. And was the is, is the Bible like gospel? I mean, what is do you it something is it something that we should take at 100% face value and that you know what it says is uh the law? No. It was never meant to be taken literally. That happened with Constantine in uh, 25 AD when he united everything under a literal Christianity. Before then, Christians were known as Heliognostics before 325 AD. And Heliognostics is two words. It's Helio, which means sun, and Gnosis, which means knowers or or knowledge, sun worshippers. Um, in fact, his nephew, uh, uh, he had a nephew, uh, Julian the Apostate, who after Constantine died, his nephew tried to bring everyone back to um, solar worship and he got killed in battle for his troubles. But this was never meant to be taken literally. Everybody knew it was an encoded story before 325 AD. Yeah. I mean, I, I when I think about, I've, I've read the Bible, not the whole thing, but I mean, when I was, uh, <laughs> when I was locked up in, uh, in, prison and you know the only thing that they would give you while you're doing your little 21 days in intake you have to be isolated and then before they figure out where they're going to put you and everything else and so the only book you're allowed to have is is the bible so i started reading it and i i got to the uh psalms right i think it's the psalms and Mm -hmm. i think that it's a good blueprint of how to live your life so to say you know, but I, just like anything else that man touches, it, it corrupts, you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't follow that. I mean, I'm a, I'm a universe guy. 
I believe in the universe and, you know, there's things out there that have happened to me in my own personal life that I can't explain. And I don't, I just look at it as a universe and energy. So right. I, what, what, uh, what brought you down this road to want to write books about this uh, subject or these, that this type of subject matter? So about nine years ago, yeah, nine years ago, I had moved, or eight years ago, I should say, eight years ago, I'm from Long Island, and I moved to Boston and uh, for a new job. And uh, when I got there, you know, there wasn't a whole lot to do because I didn't really know anyone there. So what I basically did was I the iPad had just come out, so I would just go down YouTube rabbit holes. And I came across this information one time, and I realized that this is... I was raised religious, you know, but I never took to it. And I always looked for answers. And then I went down a rabbit hole and I came across a couple guys that really gave me answers. So I, I dove headfirst into it because astrotheology has really explained everything for me. And uh, I realized once I started learning this stuff that nobody was writing stories about it there were there were nonfiction books there were there was stuff like that that was getting ridiculed but nobody wrote fiction stories where the characters uncover everything and so i realized that's what i needed to do that's what i wanted to do yeah that's awesome man and so you've got a six book series and of these books i think i i put them in here as you um as you uh put them in in your email. So I don't know mm -hmm. if it's in order or not. Probably. Mm -hmm. The first one is beneath the veil mm -hmm. into the rabbit hole and your link. Uh, that link is also in the show notes or description for anybody else that if you want to purchase these books and, you know, support Micah and what he's doing, all of that's available in the description, direct links and everything to mm -hmm. where you can support Micah. So what is the first one uh, start out? talking about so it's a, it's a story about this uh this harvard medical student who's a functioning alcoholic and he has a couple of friends and he gets a call from his mother that his brother had died or been killed it's very confusing and he was a marine and he gets a call he finds out that he has to go to washington dc to get a medal from the president for his brother one of those posthumous things and then he goes there and he finds an email that he overlooked, I guess, in his drunken state. And he opens it and it's from his brother from an anonymous email that's completely encrypted. And he opens this email and it's this long rambling letter. And so he gets back from Washington, D.C. and he shows his best friend this, who's like a whiz with conspiracies and stuff. And he finds out it's a very complex cryptogram. And as they start to decode it, it starts to go up the chain of command as far as like the church, the president, uh, as far as what's really going on. It talks a lot about MK ultra and um, that's pretty much it. I'm not going to give away the ending, yeah, no. but um, that's, that's pretty much what it is for the first book. Awesome. So I have a question that I just thought of is astrology and astro theology similar or completely different astrology is just the constellations as how they affect you like your birth chart and stuff that's astrology astro theology is the theology of the signs where all the signs come from mm. and how they how how they uh how they fit into the bible so how do the signs, because I, I heard you explaining it on another podcast, how do the signs fit in with astrotheology? So I can go through the 12 signs with you and explain that if you'd like. Yeah, actually, could you please? Sure. All right. So I start with Aquarius, even though the new year starts in uh, Aries, I start with Aquarius. So Aquarius is represented by the man with the water pitcher. Then Pisces is the sign of the two fish in the water. Then Aries is the ram, 
And in Aries, you have March 21st, which is the spring equinox. It's a 12-hour day, 12-hour night. It's also the Passover, or the passing over of the sun over the equator and back on its way up to the height in the summer solstice. In Christianity, the passing over is changed and called the resurrection of God's son. So you have the passing over and the resurrection. It's basically two things, two separate meanings, but it has the same meaning. Um, it's also why the Jews mirrored the lamb's blood on the door in Exodus from the uh, so that God didn't smite the firstborn child as he did in the Egyptians. It's why the Jews have a lamb shank bone on their Passover plate. It's why the Jews blow the ram's horn to the sky. It's because the Jews are the people of Aries. Okay. Um, Taurus is the bull. And when you look at the sky and you see Taurus, then you know you have to put the plow on the bull on Earth so that you can plant the seeds so you can harvest in Virgo and Libra. Then Gemini is the twins. Cancer is the crab. And it's a sideways moving creature. So just just as the sun rises a degree on its axis starting December 25th, because that's what it does. It starts on December 25th, rising a degree. And then each day it rises an additional degree alongside the zodiac wheel. Then when it hits June 21st, it stops for three days at that height. And then it drops a degree on June 25th. And then it goes down a degree every single day until it hits January 21st, which is the summer, which is the winter solstice. And then for three days, it stays at that degree. So that's where the idea that God's son is dead for three days comes from, because the sun is literally at its lowest point and it's dead. And then it comes back to life on December 25th, which is the birth of Jesus, just as it's the birth of Osiris, it's the birth of uh, Porus, it's the birth of Dionysus. It's every God's born on December 25th, and that's why. Hmm. Then Leo is the lion. The ruling planet of Leo is actually the sun. Then Virgo is the sign of the woman holding, is the virgin holding the wheat stalk. So I remember when we were saying that you plant in Taurus, right? That's what I just said before. Mm-hmm. Well, in Virgo, virgins would go out and cultivate the wheat in order to make the bread. That's why it's a woman holding a wheat stalk. Then Libra is the justice. It's the scales balance. It's the just one. And the reason it's the justice is because it judges God's son as it passes over the fall equinox. And it begins its descent into winter, which is cold, which is its death. And the Jews always celebrate the new year around the fall equinox. And also, I just told you that um, Libra is the justice. It's the scales. It's the justice. It's the judger. It's the judgment. It's the just one. Um, And that's why the Jews have Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement where they're being judged by God and whether they're going to be put into the book of life or not for the following year. Libra is also wine season. So when you plant the grapes in Taurus, you can press them in, uh, in Libra. So in Virgo, you have the bread and in Libra, you have the wine, the bread and the wine. It's the symbols of Christianity. Then Scorpio is the scorpion and he's the betrayer. And he's the betrayer because when a scorpion bites you, it leaves an imprint in your skin that looks like two lips. And it's why the mafia has the kiss of death. That's where that comes from. It's why Jesus was betrayed by Judas with a kiss. Mm. Because that's where the kiss comes from. Because Jesus is the son. And Judas is Scorpio. The 12, the 12 disciples each line up to one of the zodiac signs. So the son is judged in Libra and it's betrayed in Scorpio. And finally in Sagittarius with the bow and the arrow. Finally kills the son. In the Bible, the bow and the arrow turns into a spear. It, it's translated as a spear. And I'm going to show you where that happens. And then Capricorn is the goat because Capricorn is at the bottom of the zodiac wheel and it starts to climb. Just like this goat climbs the mountain. Mm-hmm. That's It metaphorically does that too. So those are the 12 signs of the zodiac. And that's basically the astrotheology behind them. Huh. So all most of... Of stuff from from back in in like the ancient times, I guess you would call it. Like when when did when when was this period where they did all of this? Uh, could you refer rephrase that? What do you mean did all this? 
Sorry, that's got a little bit general. When when was the period when they started, you know, what you just explained, when was that? Like on the timeline. Like how, how oh, long ago? This is this goes back at least 40,000 years. Have you heard of the Lascaux Caves? Uh no, I haven't. You've never heard of the Lascaux Caves in France? The caves that they found, they went and they found all these drawings on the back of them. Mm, no, not really. I don't. I, maybe if I have, I forgot about it or saw it on Discovery Channel or History Channel, but it wasn't mm-hmm. something that I that I retained. Well, but they found a cave. They found a, some caves in Lascaux. It's called the Lascaux Caves because it's in Lascaux, uh, France. And what they did was they went in and then they found all these drawings on the wall of like rams and bulls and sheep and and horses and lions, all sides of the Zodiac. And they carbon dated the wall. And the wall came out to be about 40,000 years old. And I know there's a lot of people out there that say carbon dating is bullshit. It's not. Um, I mean, it kind of is. So up to 50,000 years, carbon dating is pretty accurate. After that, it's not. So they carbon dated this. It was 40,000 years. And then what they did was they called in an astronomer who, with a computer who basically they, they printed out this big thing of, of when they were around the stars of where the stars were. And they superimposed it on the wall. And what they found was is that the bull was where Taurus was supposed to be. The fish was where Pisces was supposed to be. The ram was where Aries was supposed to be. And so on and so forth. So... At least 40,000 years, whoever our ancestors were, knew about this science. Hmm. Yeah, it's when you start going back and, and looking at, you know, the why the reasons why we do things or it's really interesting. And it's kind of something that I want to get a little bit more into uh, talking about in my podcast, because I know we both uh, are fans of uh tinfoil hat podcast with uh, Sam Tripoli and he has a right. lot of interesting folks on there that talk about certain aspects you know from synchronicity to stuff like you're talking about ancient civilizations uh, what's the Atlantis the there's also the giants you know right. so you see giants running around and they actually have uh, you know uh, bones and stuff like that but when they find them they kind of keep it quiet Mm -hmm. they don't really talk a whole lot about it so yeah it's they bury it as they literally bury it metaphor metaphorically and literally why do you why do you think it is that they don't want us to know about that because the by the the religious texts go back eight six to eight thousand years there can't be any history before then oh okay so, but I mean, they, they're, they still like, you know, the last, uh, what was the last, um, pyramid that they, that they opened up or the last time that they found something and they started dating it and it went back, it changed the timeline again. Like they keep finding right. things that change the timeline. I just, and, and how can they, how can they bury it then? They do. You see the story disappears. Huh. So you think religion has that strong of a hold, like the Vatican and, and all of that on, on everything? Absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean, archaeology is basically, there's some things they let through and there's some things they don't. Yeah, I know you. I, you had mentioned something about Neil deGrasse Tyson in that interview that you were talking about. And... I don't know. Is he? Would he just be considered like controlled opposition? Because I know he's been on a Rogan a few. He's times. not controlled opposition. He's he's just he's not as smart as as people make him out to be. Like he's okay. fucking smart, but he's not. What I had said on that previous podcast, which I'll say now about Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I've reached out to Neil many times, and he's never answered. So maybe the, your listeners can get together and, and tag him on Twitter and tag me. And so I can finally see this is basically, he said that new year's Eve, nothing significant happens or new year's day. There's no significant reason why our new year is that. Cause if you think about it, astrologically, it would be like the Jews or, or, or the Egyptians. It would be on a solstice or an equinox. Those are cardinal days. 
that uh, in the year. Those are very important days. But no, it's it's January 1st. So on December 31st at midnight, it's symbolized by the ball dropping. But if you look straight up in the air, as high as you can look, you'll see Sirius, which is our dog star. And then you follow a line straight down, and it's Earth. And then you follow a line straight down, and it's the sun. So it's a perfect alignment. So Sirius hits its height on uh, December 31st at midnight. So what I said was, you're wrong. And he's never responded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. What role does... I lost the I lost the question I was going to ask you. Um, now I do you re, you mentioned something about pineal gland uh, mm-hmm. in in your in that as well, and that's interesting to me because, like I believe that we have abilities that we're not able to tap into, whether it's from all the the the. The, whatever that frequency is around us, you know, from all of the things right. that we have, all of our, uh, you know, electronics devices, et cetera. But I've had experiences in my own life that can't be explained via like, you know, kind of telepathy and, you know, things where I've thought things and, you know, weeks later it sort of manifested itself in a way that I couldn't explain. Right. I think and, everybody has. Yeah, but it's, it was a little bit more than deja vu. It was it was something that was like, holy crap! Right. How how did that like you happen? Could see it like like you could see it playing out exactly as like your dream was, or exactly as something else was. No, it was a little different than that. So I'll I'll explain the story to you. So I was in Vegas. Uh, I was at the Rum Jungle. Uh, I was high on something, uh, probably GHB or something and dancing around. I see this, this girl dancing on the stage and she's beautiful. She's gorgeous. I'm like mesmerized by her. Right. And I take off, I leave. Um, I go, I don't know, maybe two weeks pass by my roommate gives me a colada pin. I take it a bar and I take the whole thing and I've never taken it before while I'm in this, like this colada pin stupor. The phone rings. I pick it up. It's some guy that I I know and I'd met from, I don't know, maybe a bar somewhere. And he puts this girl on the phone. And I've never met her before. Mm -hmm. And guess who it is? It's that girl from the club. How did you figure that out? Because I, 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 I met her at some point. Right? So we ended up hanging out. And I'm like, holy moly. You're. How did that happen? Because I never gave her my number, never talked to her, never anything. So, I mean, it was like some weird thing that happened that, that put me in, in that path. And so, to me, that's kind of in that sort of realm of, of things that you can't explain, but we do with our mind because our minds are very powerful. Yeah. But we, I mean, like, what are we? <laughs> 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 well, our emotions, they, the one thing they don't teach you is how strong your emotions are. Your heart. Have you ever seen a picture of Jesus? Right? White mm-hmm. Jesus, specifically, the cartoon. You'll notice a few things. Number one, the sun is always behind his head. And there's sun rays coming out of it. The sun is always behind Jesus' head because he is the sun. Then you'll see him like this, with two fingers up. This is an ancient comedic peace sign. And by comedic, I mean Egyptian. This goes back to the Egyptian times. This is a British war sign. This is an ancient comedic peace sign. That's why Baphomet, that's why Lucifer, that's why Jesus, they're all like this. Okay? Um, The other thing you'll see is his heart is always outside his body. And it's wrapped around with a crown of thorns, his heart. And the crown of thorns represents the rays of the sun, the solar flares. The heart itself represents the toroidal field. Have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. The heart's torus field. Each of our hearts uh, beat a certain electromagnetic frequency, and it actually radiates. If you were able to uh, get somebody's aura, you would see that it radiates six feet outside of your body in in a complete circle around you in a torus field. That's why the elites are trying to keep you six feet away from each other right now. Because your intentions and your heart 
affect other hearts. You know, it's on a very sub subconscious level that you, when you're in a close proximity with someone, you're sharing their energy and vice versa. Mm. So they know this and they want to keep you apart. So that's basically the thing. And the other thing too is, is that white Jesus is not actually Jesus. First of all, Jesus wasn't real, but even if he was, he wouldn't be white. He's from the Middle East. White Jesus is actually the face of Caesar Borgia, who is Pope Alexander the Sixth, illegitimate bastard son. Yes, popes used to have kids. Uh, they were never married, but they used to have kids. And this pope decreed, because before, and this was in the 1500s, I believe, he's from the Borgia family, which is one of the 13 ruling Illuminati families still. And that pope in him. And he declared that his son be the face of Jesus because, I mean, unlike Muhammad, where you just can't draw him, it wasn't like that. There was just no picture of Jesus before then. No one had drawn him. And since then, white Jesus, and you'll always see him everywhere. That's that's where that comes from. Wow. That's interesting. So why would... So kind of what we're like, all this kind of ties together with where we are right now. Right. Sort of. I mean, you mentioned that, you know, the, the six feet distancing, the isolation, keeping us uh, out of the sun uh, to deplete us of our, you know, our vitamin D. I mean, mm -hmm. when you, when you start really taking a look at it and backing out and going, okay, well, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense, but this makes sense if you're trying to cause X, this makes sense if you're trying to cause Y, mm -hmm. like why, why would they want to do that? Um, it's all about control. Really? It's about control. Uh, vitamin D, since you brought it up, the way you activate vitamin D is you have to let the sun hit the back of your neck for 20 minutes. And that's how you activate vitamin D in your body. Um, there's a reason that people like Bill Gates want to block out the sun. You know, it's about control. It's about control is what it is. It's about control and making sure that you don't realize just how powerful you are, that we're all spiritual beings. We, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. We're not humans having a spiritual experience. It's the other way around. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I, and I, and I, I agree too. I mean, it's when you get around, I guess it's that, like they like the magic rituals right that they mm -hmm. that they put on on the big events right right when you have a big super bowl and you have 50,000 people within a certain a certain um proximity to each other and then they have all these different uh rituals that are happening right in front of us but we don't know it mm -hmm. is that correct or is that just sort of yeah mean? Yeah, it, it's the bigger the platform, the more they try and sneak in that stuff. Because it's called revelation of the method. Uh, basically, the elites are allowed to do what they want as long as they show us. Whether it's hidden in programming or backmasking in music or things along that nature, as long as they show it, it kind of offsets the karma that they would get. Because karma is the true language of the universe. So, basically... Like the, the the Super Bowl, which is like an Illuminati ritual, and they usually are, mm -hmm. but a lot of it comes from a perverted and a misunderstanding of things like Satanism and Luciferianism, which at its core is not evil. I mean, Lucifer is the light bearer. He's the light bearer in Genesis one three. God says, "Let there be light." Why would he name his top enemy the light bearer? Let there be light. He mentions Lucifer right at the beginning. How are you going to have light without the light bearer? And Lucifer is also known as the morning star. Well, the morning star is Venus. Because when you go outside and you look at the, and you look at the sky right before sunrise, you look straight ahead, you'll see a very bright and blinding light above the sun. And that's Venus. It announces the arrival of God's sun. So that's Lucifer. Lucifer is Venus. And the pentagram... Uh, if you were to take Earth and Venus as they go around the sun, they almost connect at five points. You connect those dots, it's the pentagram. So the ancients knew all of this, and it's just been subverted and perverted. 
These don't, these are not evil things. And Satan comes from Hashatan or Shatan in Hebrew, which literally means adversary. That's all it means. Not devil, not antichrist. It literally means adversary. Anybody's a Satan who's your adversary. So it's just so, misunderstandings. Or purpose, you know, just like a lot of things that it, that it appears like, what what's up is down what's left is right um, always you know what which you know it's always they're trying to confuse you and then when i say they i just mean who, whoever it is that's out there pulling these strings um you mentioned the illuminati uh i actually served time and used to walk around with a gentleman by the name of uh fritz springmeyer when i was in prison mm-hmm. and he's the author of bloodlines of the illuminati that book. So it was, it was interesting. And, you know, he had, he wrote a couple of other ones called watchtower society and just kind of like how the, how the religion, you know, or religion religions all started off as one. And then they just branched off into different, different, mm-hmm. um, sects and, and, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, compartmentalizing, you know, the control basically. Right. So yeah, it was, it was really interesting. Um, yeah, all of this stuff is kind of interesting, and I, I believe that you know more things are coming out as people start doing research, such as yourself and and others out there that are doing stuff. I know David Weiss is making the rounds right now too on the uh, on the flat, flat Earth. Earth. Yeah, um, I see him on every, every. It's like every podcast that I do, he's like the next week. Yeah. Like I've seen him so many times all around. I've yet to sit through one of them, but um, yeah, I've I've had him on, but I haven't published it yet. You know, he was, he, he came on before I started, sw- before I switched my format to live stream and, uh, I, I haven't, uh, gotten, gotten to that one yet, but yeah, he's, he's doing, doing it. Uh, I, it, it's interesting. I mean, I don't know, like anything else. I mean, if you don't see it with your own eyes these days, it's kind of hard to believe, you know, there's so much information coming out to you. There's so many different variations, well, it's it's all about having to know what to look for, too. We can look at the same exact Super Bowl party and see two separate things. Yeah, you know, somebody from my Toastmasters group put this picture out, and it was it was a picture that was really uh, – he said it was controversial because so many people saw it as like a dress, right? And so mm-hmm. many people saw it as a blue and white dress, and then other people saw it as a gold and white dress. Mm-hmm. I, I, how is uh, the Todd to me, or is that just like what do you do? You, are well, there's you things familiar? like there's things like women can see more shades of red than men can, and there's a girl, there's a woman who actually has an extra chromosome, uh, or a variant on a chromosome, I should say, and she can actually see 99 million more colors than we can. See the electromagnetic spectrum, okay? You know the chakras. Mm-hmm. The chakras. So the bottom is red, or under it is infrared. The top is purple, or above that is ultraviolet. But usually from purple to red is the only thing that we can see. Our audible is also, I think, 20 decibels to negative 20 decibels that we can hear. You know, there's 99% of everything that's out there. It, we can't, it is filtered by our five senses. That's why when you do hallucinogenics, it opens you up because it triggers different parts of your brain in order to see things. Hmm. Yeah, I've been I've been really curious about about that myself. Um, I mean, I've done I've done mushrooms. I've I've never done a, a hero dose or the or the amount that they would give in the job John Hopkins study that produces the you know all of the stuff that comes along with it, you know, the, the different stages of it. There's a guy that I, I can't remember his name. It's like my, ah. I'm going to have a guy on my show who's a, an author and he talks about all of that. I did an, an awesome uh, uh, article about the John Hopkins study where he interviewed the, some of the subjects of it and their experience and, and you know, what it, what it was to them. And it's pretty cool, man. Mm-hmm. Um, the only time my mushroom use the last one, it, it all, I never got to that point. It was more of like the party dose. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> where you see a little bit of stuff, but you, you're not having a life changing experience or, you know, going down that, th- those holes where you're seeing all kinds of different things and, and, you know, God appears to you or, you know, whatever it is, is for you that, that works and has some life altering uh, or behavior altering effect to it. Mm-hmm. I want to. I'm just, I don't think I want to do it guided. I, I don't think I want to do it without it being guided by somebody there in case it turns into something that I don't want it to. I hear you. I feel the same way. You know? Um, so your, your background, uh, you went to, you went to university, right? I did. Okay. So you got a background you're in, in, uh, you gave it to me and it's in the description. I had to get a lot better at some of this stuff. <laughs> I have an English degree. <laughs> an English degree. All right. Well, is there anything else that you want to kind of tap into? We're at, uh, hold on a second here. Let me get back to this. We're at about 40 minutes, so we can we can wrap about some other things that you want to touch on if you like. It's up to you. I'm fine with you asking questions. Yeah. I'm I'm more of a conversationalist, not a not not a not a not a serious journalist here. <laughs> I just I just like having good conversations, man, that kind of like lead to wherever. Um Yeah, that's you know. kind of how I feel lately. Usually my interviews are usually structured, like I have the presentation that I usually do. And then there's usually the similar questions or the same questions, but I kinda like just the random conversation lately. That's a little bit you know. better, man. It's more organic. It's, you know, it, it's almost, I like, I like presenting something that, that makes people feel like they're on a fly on they're the, where they're the fly on a wall of a conversation that they would normally never get to experience any other time. Right. Yeah. I mean, basically you do 40 or 50 interviews like I've done since June and it's just after a while, it's just kind of like mixing, mixing things up is a better way. Yeah, yeah, it gets a little monotonous and and you know just sort of routine, and it's like, all right, well, let's let's get ready to do the spiel, mm-hmm. crack the knuckles, get ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I will say this though, is to your listeners though, I'm on Twitter, and Facebook at Micah Dank. If you're interested in the kind of stuff we talked about, or you're interested more in astrotheology, I sell copies of my books signed, so you can reach out to me directly, and I will. Uh, <clears throat> You basically just PayPal me, and then I'll mail them to you. Um, they're also on Amazon. The series is called Into the Rabbit Hole, and I barely touched on any topics this this interview. Barely touched on any topics, but I go deep into stuff. I mean, book one is completely about MK Ultra and and how it truly is. Well, it's a real thing. Yeah. I mean, they they they. they uh... I know Joe Rogan talked about it on his podcast. He had somebody on there, but I mean, it was the CIA got into the, uh, into the, the hippie culture and they were trying to sabotage that movement. Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, it's like John Lennon said, he said they gave us acid to control us and it ended up freeing us. Yeah. It's, it's, and they were not happy when he said that. Yeah, it's probably why he's not not he he probably left shortly after that. Yeah, you know, and it, that's not that. I, I had a conversation with somebody because I like to I like to amplify the signal of people that are calling out corruption, whether mm-hmm. it's financial corruption, whether it's corruption in the prison industry. Since I'm that's my population, I was you know formerly incarcerated, did three years federal and state time uh, for mm-hmm. drug trafficking and fraud, and. It seems like that anytime anybody gets a movement for the people behind them, they kill them. You know, you it depends. have you, it depends because they are controlled opposition. They so are you, controlled opposition that the people. So, so which one would you say was a controlled opposition between the two, uh, Malcolm X and, and Martin Luther King? I don't think either of them were. No? I think they were legit. Okay. I think they were legit. Um, JFK? He wasn't controlled no, opposition. He wasn't controlled. What about the back, the Black Panther? 
the one that Ooh. they they just did the uh, the movie about the Judas. What was his name? Yeah, it- I, I I guess you're right. Like when you get too powerful, they kill you. And but here's the thing: it's not just that they kill you. That's not good enough. What they do is they they tra- they trash you while you're alive. They kill you, and then it's just like sainthood. And then immediately after you die, they name things after you. They kind of elevate you in memoriam. But the main thing is, is to kill the movement and disperse the disperse the energy of what it is that that you're, you know what I mean? Because when right. the, the, the one thing that the elites don't want is for us to realize how powerful we are and that we are more alike than we are different. Mm-hmm. You know, everything that we see in the media is... T- That's why everything's a binary choice. Explain. Red or blue, black or white, Democrat, Republican. Everything's a binary choice. Mask, no mask. And then if you can keep these fuckers at 50-50, like they were loving this presidential election because it was basically 50-50, mm-hmm. you know? If you can get to 50-50, that means they'll do the work for you. Half will fight the other half, and then and then none will be the wiser. Yeah, and then you have the, the media that, that is another leg of it or another – Charlie Robinson likes to call it the uh, global octopus of control. You know, one yeah, of I've those- been on Charlie. I've been on Charlie a couple of times. I love the yeah. guy. I'm doing it again in March 30th, I think. Yeah, he probably asks a lot better questions than I do. He's a lot more knowledgeable, a lot of different things. Um, I've yet to to ask him to be on my show because I don't know if I'm. I, I guess I feel like I'm not ready or that up to that par to be able to volley with him on that level. Oh, dude, want- just do it. Just do it. You'll learn from him. You'll learn from you. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to seem like a dumbass. <laughs> I get my covers pulled. <laughs> because <laughs> i mean at, at, at you know at, at the bottom line i'm just just a regular guy man just a regular blue collar dude just looking for answers and trying to you know figure out what i am what we are what this is <laughs> yeah because it's super confusing and i mean i guess it's not that confusing if you live your life the way they want you to and you get on that hamster wheel and just keep going and and don't you know you got your blinders on you're on the you're on the in the matrix you know you're a cog in the wheel and don't ask questions don't don't you know disrupt things keep keep paying that debt off you know never own anything except debt right you know i know i own a lot of debt I'm trying to get out of that mm-hmm <laughs> But yeah. All right. Well, we're at 47. And if that's, that's about all you got, I mean, that was, just, you said you could have gone a little deeper. Is there one thing that you want to go deeper on? If you could have choose anything in this, uh, conversation, well, what I can do is if you'll have me back on next time that I come on, I'll go over some Bible verses. Okay. I can go over some Bible verses and, and we can decode them with the astrology that I just taught you. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. And 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 a, and a good thing is is that you even though uh David Weiss did his interview before you, you're going to be published before him. So, oh nice. Yeah, cuz these ones are a lot easier to do than the ones I was doing before. The other ones take me about 4 to 6 hours to edit down, do all the things that I need to do with them versus a live stream that I can just take this recording and flop it over, maybe cut a couple things down and and publish it. So, this will be out man. probably within a week. Yeah, send me a send me a text when you uh when you have the link. Yeah, awesome. For sure. Um, let everybody know where they can find you. Um, and well, here, let's do one one thing before you go. You had a book suggestion, a lawyer's case for the afterlife. Why why is that why was that book uh book? It's a suggested? completely it's uh it's an Australian ex lawyer. Okay. Uh he's retired. Who has a million dollar I guess, bounty or policy that if someone can prove that the afterlife doesn't exist, he'll give it to them. 
it's been out for years. Nobody has challenged, nobody has been able to prove it yet. His book, I lost someone very dear to me. I read his book. His book takes a completely non-religious, fact-based information for every single case that you could make to prove that the afterlife is real. And, you know, we're not really supposed to know that in this world. They're not supposed to tell us. They're just supposed to tell you, oh, go to church. Go to church. Be good. You'll go to heaven. You know? But this book, like, gives you proof that it exists. It's one of the best books I've ever read. Yeah, I think there's something out there. There's something other than this uh, when we leave here. I, I don't I don't know it for sure, but uh, maybe it's just wishful thinking. Maybe I wish that there I hope that there's something better than this when 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 we leave from this place. Um we talked about the Tinfoil Hat podcast, amazing podcast. Uh, Sam Tripoli is a good dude, funny as hell. Um yeah. but Chrissy Mayer. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the right spelling or not. I can't remember. Yes, um, it is. All right. And she uh she's funny, man. Have you been on her show yet? I've been on her show. I, we actually go back to elementary school together. Really? We went to, yeah, we grew up in the same town. I did a show. We grew up in the same town. We both kind of came up. I'm in the, like, we're, we're, we run in similar circles now. You know, she's in the truth of community. She's in the conspiracy community. The only difference is that I don't do politics. I don't touch politics because I'm an author. Yeah. But her bread and butter is what she's doing. You know, I'm so happy for her every day. You know, but uh, I did do her show. She's she's fucking hilarious. Uh, yes, but yeah, we is. go back. We go back to we we literally go back to like kindergarten. Yeah, I keep trying to hit her. I keep trying to to hit her on Instagram. Like, hey, you should come on my show. But maybe she's maybe she, maybe she's too big league for me. I don't know. She oh, is. She's, she's 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 cool though. Her little her her uh, her Instagram her tweets her tweets are hilarious, man. Yeah. So I, I'd like to catch her on a on a on one of her comedy shows um, at some point. Mm-hmm. It's awesome that they're doing that. They're open up everywhere else except for I mean, even California has opened up except for my county so far. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Well, I mean, they're not all the way open up. I think they're you can now indoor dine at twenty percent capacity in almost everywhere except for Contra Costa County, which is the one I'm in, which is the biggest county I think in my area. So Mm -hmm. whatever (laughs) one of these days we'll get back to normal. Hopefully. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, thank you. I appreciate you giving me your time and yeah, let's, uh, let's hook up again and try this uh, one more time and you can explain the, uh, the connections between what you just explained. Sounds good, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks, brother. Thank you, everybody else who decided to join us, and uh, I'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast. Sean is a single dad, a union blue-collar guy, and he spent time in federal and state prison for drug trafficking and fraud. When he was released from prison in 2006, all he had was the clothes on his back, a bag of mail, and some paperwork. Since then, he's turned his life around and shares the struggles and successes on this podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we hope you were moved to connect to the show. Book a guest spot. For merch, Patreon, PayPal, and social media links, go to linktr.ee slash nowhere to go but up. On Instagram at nowhere to go but up now. On Twitter at but up now. On the YouTube channel at nowhere to go but up podcast. See you next time.